Alright, what's up everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one today. We're doing a very special video, a Christmas kind of themed video. It's not Christmas yet, but it is going to be in a few days. And yeah, we're going to be giving teams some things. Today's video is going to be one thing every NBA team needs. Basically, I'm going to be playing the role of Santa Claus. And we're going to be gifting each NBA team one thing that they really need. For, so far for this team this season uh yeah i'm gonna do that very excited for that and by the way i hope you guys have a happy holidays merry christmas all the stuff i tell you if you don't celebrate christmas whatever you know holiday you celebrate hope you guys you know do good spend some time with the family eat good food do all the stuff like that but uh yeah we're gonna get right into it thank you guys for views on the videos and the shorts recently really appreciate it if you enjoyed the content around here consider subscribing like turn notifications we are on the road to 500 subscribers so if you would subscribe that would mean a lot a lot link to my twitter tiktok so like that in the description down below and uh, yeah i don't want to waste any more of your time let's get right into it so yeah, we're going to be giving every nba team one different thing we're going to go through all 30 teams give a little in-depth thing of why i would give this team this you know do it for every team but if you don't like what i do or what you think your team needs something different than what i give them let me know in the comments down below you know, let me know what you think your favorite team or any other team needs so far this season we're getting right into it starting with the atlanta hawks the atlanta hawks is here i'm giving them a player that doesn't need the ball um i feel like the hawks right now they're not good they're currently 12 and 15 they're sitting at 10th in the eastern conference right now um yeah they've been very up and down the entirety of the year and the thing i think that needs to change is they need players off ball players that don't need the ball in their hands the hawks have too many i think have too many players that need the ball trey young of course dominates the ball he's one of the guys that has the ball in, in the most entirety of the league but we've seen the last few years that he can do it you know they want all these conference finals with that you know so trey young needs the ball because he creates so much not only for himself but for everybody else around him and then jante murray also needs the ball he's become a pretty solid three-point shooter since going to atlanta but he's not an off-ball guy yet. You know, he still needs a ball in his hand. Baka McDonough to do that, you know, likes to create, even though he can't catch and shoot. He also kind of needs his own little creation and stuff like that. So I feel like the Hawks just have too many ball handlers, too many guys that need the ball in their hands, and not enough guys that just will play off-ball, play off a tray on. I feel like they don't have a lot of good roster construction in the sense of build, building or playing off of Trey Young. Maybe a two-guard that can play off of Trey Young and, be more comfortable off the ball would be better because John T. Murray is really a point guard in his own right but he went to Atlanta now he's got to play the two and trying to find his way there's still Trey Young and John they still aren't really like you know meshing together well and clicking you know so I think Atlanta for them what they need I'm giving them players that doesn't need the ball in their hands and players that could just play off of Trey Young because I feel like that would look a lot better than what's going on right now for the Boston Celtics their gift is health to Chris Taps Porzingis. That's what they need. Um, the Celtics are arguably the best team in the league. 21 and 6, they're tied for the best record in the NBA. And yeah, they've been really, really good. And I feel like Chris Taps Porzingis has been such a key part to the Celtics team. So far, he's averaging 19, 7, and 1, with almost two blocks, shooting 53% from the field, 35% from three. Just unlocks a new, just unlocks a new dynamic for this entire Celtics team. You know, and he has missed the games. He's missed seven games so far this year. He's played 20 of the 27 games. A lot of them are, like, back-to-backs. We don't really, really, you know, um, push it too hard in, like, November, December, when we know we're probably going to really, we're going to really need him for May and April, you know, and maybe June if we get there. So, yeah, I'm just giving him health to Chris House Wazingas because I feel like if Chris House Wazingas is healthy and playing the way he's playing, they're one. Of, they're the best team in the league when Chris House Wazingas is out there. You know, he's the only one that's really had problems. Like everyone else... I mean, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have almost missed one game. Drew Holiday missed two games. But besides that, like, they've been relatively healthy so far. And the show, they've been really, really good. But yeah, health to Chris House Porzingis. He's probably the one that they really need down the stretch. And he's the one that missed the most time. So I just want health to him, you know, because I feel like if he's there, it's looks going to be a really good team. For the Brooklyn Nets, I'm giving them a star. More in, like, more in depth, a go-to guy that's, like, respected, you know, I feel like the Nets, they're a fun team. Right now, they're 13 and 14. They're ninth. They're currently on a four game losing streak. Uh, I feel like they're one thing they don't have. They have a bunch of good role players. They have good defenders. They have good shooters and stuff like that. They don't have a go to guy, star to build around, you know? Like, Mikael Bridges was kind of like coming into the year. People thought Mikael Bridges was going to take that jump. Mikael Bridges has been really good this year, especially as of recently. The last like month, he's been really, really good. He might even be an all star. Who knows? But he's not, I think we see he's not a super, he's not a star player on a team. 
he's more of a good number two. You know, and Cam Thomas has been great so far this year as well. He's putting up, he's leading the team in scoring. He's averaging like what 24 points per game or something like that. But he's not really a star yet. You know what I mean? Like the Nets don't have a guy that at the end of the game or during stretches they're like here, man, like here, like Shea or like a De'Aaron Fox or like a Luca or someone like that. They don't have that, you know. And I feel like that's what they really need because they have the surrounding talent. So if a star would come in, they got Mikael Bridges, you got Cam Johnson, you got Nick Claxton, you got Spencer, you got all these Royce O'Neals, Dorian Finney-Smiths, you got all these good surrounding pieces, guys that know their role, play are used to playing a role on a really good team, guys that are used to being catch and shoot, defend wings, stuff like that. They just don't have the go-to star player that all the other players around them complement. You know, so I think a superstar or go-to guy, if the Nets have that. They're a way better team than what they are right now. For the Charlotte Hornets, my gift to them is health to LaMelo Ball. They really need it. Uh, LaMelo is the building piece of the future for this Hornets team. Last year, he only played in about 30-ish games due to injury. This year, he was back. He was looking on track and then injured again. And so far, he's missed 11 games. He's played 15 of 26. We don't know when he's going to come back yet. But it really sucks because LaMelo is having a great year. Even though he started off the first like six games-ish, he wasn't really that good. So far, he's averaging 24, 5, and 8 with a steal, shooting 44% from the field, 38% from three. He's the building block of the future for this Hornets team. He's the guy that hopefully the, can lead the Hornets to where the playoffs and to success. You know, that's the Hornets' hope. And so far, the last two years, he's been really injured. And it really sucks because he's honestly the only reason to really watch the Hornets and for the Hornets to be actually relevant is LaMelo Ball because he makes this team so much better. You know, he just does so much for this team. And without him, it's like, what do we, I would really care about the Hornets, you know? So my gift to them, if I could give them a gift, it would be just having LaMelo healthy. For Chicago Bulls, this one is pretty different from the other ones, but I'm giving them the gift of a Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan trade. Um, Zach Levine has not played in the last few games, and since Zach Levine has not played, they're 8-3. and three. They're coming on a three-game winning streak, and they're only a half game out of the play-in right now. Uh, this team just looks so much different than it did early in the year with Zach Levine. And, you know, that's not no shots to Zach Levine. That's just what it is, you know. And there's been a lot of talks about Zach Levine potentially getting traded. He probably is going to get traded. Hopefully he does get traded because this team is a lot better. Looks a lot better, a lot more fun. And even with Levine and DeRozan, when they're at full strength, I don't really know how good of a team this really is. So I'm giving them the gift of getting Zach Levine traded. Even DeMar DeRozan too. Like DeMar has been solid in the, during the stretch, but DeMar can go too. And just having the young guys go out and play. Kobe White right now is playing really, really good. Patrick Williams looks the best he's ever looked. Right now, guys like Iota Sumo, Alex Caruso, you know, Andre Drummond, Torrey Craig, they're balling out right now. And that's a lot because Aguilina isn't there and there's just more fluidity. It's more fun. There's more ball movement. Just a different energy right now in Chicago. So I think what the best thing for them to do and a gift I would give to them was a gift of being able to get rid of Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan and having the young guys just ball out for the rest of the year. The Cleveland Cavaliers, this one's a pretty simple one, especially we're talking about this year, health. They have been one of the most injured teams this season. And yeah, I mean, they still have a good record. They're 16 and 13. They were on a three-game win streak just before last night. They lost to New Orleans. But this team has just not been able to play together consistently. You know, like all of their stars, like the, there's only two guys on this team that played every game, Max Schuess and George Yang. Are the only two guys that have played two the two guys they signed a free agency to help this team are the only two that have actually been around the entirety of the year. Jared Allen missed the first five games, but since then he's been good. But after that, Deion Mitchell's missed seven games. Darius Garner has missed nine games, and he's gonna be out for a little while longer with a broken jaw. Evan Mobley's missed eight games. He's gonna be out for a little while too due to a knee injury. Even guys like Karis Avert's missed seven games. I could they're six man. I say like Okoro, who's been a solid player for them, he's missed nine games. You know, like just so they've had injuries everywhere, really. And they haven't had really a full stretch of games to really get healthy and, you know, show what this team is. Because there's a lot of expectations coming to this year, kind of with the Cavaliers. After last year, they won 50 games, a four seed. Now this year, they added what they really need, which are shooting. Max Schroes and Jordan Yang added in, and they've both been pretty solid, you know. So this was a big year for Cleveland. And right now, it's looking kind of like, I don't want to say a waste, but it's kind of like we don't really know yet because we haven't seen them fully healthy. We haven't seen this team go on like a five or ten game stretch where they're all mostly there. And, you know, we see what this team actually is. It's just been, like, three games, and then, oh, Don Mitchell's missing today. 
and another two games, and like, oh, Darius Garland's out. Oh, Evan Mobley's out. Another few games, oh, Kyrie Severs and Anais and Coral isn't playing. It's like we haven't seen a full like five or ten game stretch where they've all, all been there, and we we're not gonna see for a while because Darius Garland and Evan Mobley are gonna be out for a few more months or for me for more few more weeks so we might not fully see this team until like maybe january you know and at that point we're already going to be like getting your halfway through the season and we haven't seen what this Cavs team is so really they my gift to them what i would give them is just health for the dallas mavericks my gift to them would be a wing def just a def defensive player a wing defender they do have a couple wing defenders but i'll more think of a wing defender that could guard twos and threes i think maybe more uh, the Mavericks have been a pretty good team this year, especially offensively. Luka Doncic is having a great year. They have a lot of guys like Grant Williams and Tim Hardaway Jr. Derek Lively have really stepped up and been a lot better than I expected. But the only thing I think that curse that doesn't put Dallas at the top is their defense. A few years ago, they made it to the conference finals based on their defense. Since then, it has fallen way, way off. You know, and they don't really have a lot of great defenders on the scene. Like Grant Williams is solid. You know, Derek Lively has been good for a rookie. Derek Jones Jr. is only out there to play defense. But after, they don't really have a good defender. Especially when we have Luka and Kyrie, who are two guys that dominate so much in the offensive end that you kind of give credit, give kind of like a pass on defense a little bit. Like, you have two of those guys there that already messes up kind of your guards. And then on the forward, you're, guarding, you're worried about Grant Williams, Derek Jones, and then a rookie, Derek Lively, you're relying on. And then off the bench, you don't really have any defense that much either, you know? So it's like, what the Mavericks really need is defense. They need to lock in because, I mean, the offense they can get. If Luka Doncic is on the court, they're going to have a chance to win no matter what. You know, really it's just about can they get stops. You know, and this team right now, I don't know if they can get consistent stops right now. So I think what they really need is a, a guy that can defend. Mainly a wing because I feel like, especially the bigger guys, are definitely going to be guys. The guys, when, like if they have to go up against a Jokic, well, you're not really going to stop Jokic, but a, a Sabonis or like a bigger Ford like that that can dominate the game i feel like they're in trouble you know so i think a big wing defender would be ideal for dallas for the nuggets my gift to them would be consistent bench play uh we knew coming into the season that the big ch change from the championship run to this year would be the bench uh, all their a lot of their guys bruce brown jeff green two key veteran pieces of last year's championship run both gone now and they're going to be lying on a lot of young guys christian brown in second year Julian Strother is a rookie, Payne Watson in his second year, Zeke Naji. Like, they're going to be relying on a lot of guys that have not been put in this position before, a lot of young players for their bench. And so far, it's been all right. They're still one of the top teams in the league. But I think probably some more consistent bench play would be ideal. You know, I mean, you got to remember, these guys are still rookies and second-year players trying to find themselves. You know, so there's going to be some inconsistency. There's going to be some struggle. Some Sometimes there has been. They have gone on losing streak. There has been struggles, you know, from the bench sometimes. So I feel like what they really need is a consistent bench player, you know, like just another vet in there, like a Jeff Green-ish type of role that can come in and just be consistent. We know every game what I'm going to get from them, you know. For the Detroit Pistons, my gift to them would be new management. They just need to clear out everything and just a new, I didn't even put a new team on for the Pistons, but basically that's what they need. Um, they've lost 25 games in a row. I mean, yeah, they've lost 25 games in a row. Uh, they're a few win losses away from breaking the record. Uh, they're 2-26. and 26. We're not even at Christmas yet, by the way, and they lost 25 games in a row. No team has even won 25 games yet. So that shows you how bad they have been. And it seems like no one in the upper management really cares. There hasn't been any sense of urgency I've seen from any quotes or any interviews from Troy Weaver, from Monty Williams, from anybody up there. They're all just keep saying, well, we were injured, Bogdanovich is back, we'll wait to see how this team gels. Gelling, waiting to see, you lost 25 games in a row, what do you mean waiting to see? Will you wait to see if you lose, if we're like early and you're like a 500 team, or a little bit below 500, then you're like, okay, we'll wait and see how this team goes. You, you're 2 and 25, you're 2 and 26, you're 2 and 26, you haven't won a game in almost two months. There's no waiting to see anymore. There's no waiting to see, there's w making moves. And changing things up. Mommy Monty Williams might have to go, unfortunately. Even though you signed him to one of the biggest deals in NBA history, he might not make it past make it two months into his coaching tenure. Troy Weaver, you gotta do something. The upper management, you gotta sell. They're chanting sell the team yesterday. They're chanting sell the team. They have the paper bags over their heads. You know when that happens, it's not good. 
you gotta you guys gotta get a new management so my gift to them would be a complete new management management that actually care about this team right now and go in make some moves make some changes and ignite some energy and get a give them a win <laughs> eventually just a win I, not even like a playoff just a win at this point would be anything for detroit but the golden state warriors my gift to them would be a star to help steph uh this year they're 13 and 14 they are on a little win streak but it has not been good for golden state um the one big thing is besides steph curry they don't really have anything to rely on clay thompson and his contract year does not look like the same clay thompson unfortunately andrew wiggins lost all of his basketball skills i don't know where he went Draymond green can't stay on the court because he keeps punching people and yeah after that you don't have anything else consistent you know brandon pajemski has been arguably like your third best player this year so that's something chris paul's been good but he's 39 years old i can't rely on chris paul to you know forever you know and then after that guys like john kuminga moses moody they're still getting their first like real rotational minutes so there's still gonna be inconsistency from them come on looney's not out there to score you know like they're, they're gary payne's injured like they don't really have a consistent help around Steph Curry you know so my gift to them would be a second star to kind of help to be consistent be there for Steph you know uh, how do they get that I don't know I'm not you know by the way all these if you haven't noticed yeah, I'm not giving them like if I say star or consistent player like this or anything like that I'm not giving specific examples because I don't know I'm not here that would just be way too long and complicated I'm just saying as the gift giver I'm giving them just a generic a player you know that would fit this description you know whoever but this the warriors yeah they need another star a consistent number a consistent star to help steph curry out man if they really want to get another ring with him for the houston rockets my gift to them would be a consistent number two uh the rockets were a very interesting one because i feel like there's not anything glaringly obvious that they really need uh, they have been a surprise this year they're 13 and 12 they're one of the better defensive teams in the league. They look like an actual competent basketball team, which is really good. I feel like I guess the only thing I would really say will be like, yeah, I need to give them or a thing that they need. A consistent number two, Alperen Shingun has been really good. He's in all-star conversations this year. He's established himself, himself as the, the guy in Houston as the building block of the future. But then after that, I feel like a consistent number two would be good. I feel like they don't have a consistent guy number two they can rely on. Forever Bleed's been good, obviously, but he's also been kind of more the playmaker for everyone else as well you know he's not out there to really score a whole lot of points he's out there to be consistent while scoring a little bit and playmaking as well after that dylan brooks has been good he's been great shooting the ball from three but we're not relying on dylan brooks to be our second scorer you know and after that it's just been kind of inconsistent you know jalen green still is trying to really find himself and who he is now in year number three and he's had some good moments he's had some not good moments Jabari Smith Jr. in his second year has still kind of been up and down. He had a good game the other day against Atlanta, but he's still kind of trying to find himself and find who he is. Their bench doesn't really have anybody that can consistently score. They have guys like Tari East and Jay Shante are good energy players and role players, but they're not guys that are going to go out there and say, hey, go get 20 for us. You know, same with Jeff Green and Aaron Holiday and stuff like that. So they don't really have a consistent, after Alpine Shangun, a consistent number two that we can rely on and be like, hey, go get us some buckets or points like that because their defense is really good. It's just their offense because all their guys are really young, you know. So I think a consistent number two, if Jalen Green and Jabari Smith Jr. step up and be like, okay, I'm the number two, or if even Fred Van Vliet says, you know what, I'll be the guy, a consistent number two, or if they, that's elsewhere, that's a different player. But just, yeah, someone to consistently be there with Alperen Shingun. The Indiana Pacers, my gift to them is someone that plays defense. Not a specific anybody, someone that knows how to play defense. Uh, we know about the Pacers, they can score. They can score in bunches. Tyrese Halliburton has been great. Guys like Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, you know, Benedict Matherin, Obi Toppin has been good. Bruce Brown, like, they got scoring. They got it. Defense, they don't have it at all. <laughs> this team gets run through on the, on the defensive end, man. I mean, geez, I feel like I could get some of my friends, we can go out there and score at least 70 or 80 on the Pacers. Like, this is just, like, their defense is pretty bad. So I think I, someone someone that can play defense on the perimeter, even in the interior, someone that just knows how to play defense and get a stop or two would go a long way for this Indiana Pacers team. That's really the only downfall what they really need. That's why they're going to lose some games, just because some night you're not going to you're not going to be able to put up 130, 140 points every night. You know, there's going to have some games, some games where some guys aren't hitting shots they usually hit. You're going to have off days that just happens in the NBA. You know, but a lot of 
thing that separates other teams that do that are other teams can get stops and be like you know what we're not our offense isn't on fire today but you know what we can rely on our defense get some stops and you know keep it close in the game and at the end we can hit our shots indiana cannot rely on that at all if indiana's not scoring 135 points they're kind of doomed you know you gotta hope that the other team is also having an off day <laughs> you know so yeah indiana the gift they need they need someone that knows how to play defense the la clippers my gift to them would be a three and d wing this one is another tough one to do because i feel like there's not any glorious glaring like obvious things especially recently they nine and one in their last 10 they just their nine game win streak just ended last night against the thunder that's when Kawhi leonard missed his first game of the year so i mean of course health would be an obvious one but they've been healthy Kawhi's only missed one game paul george only missed two games so their stars are playing guys are out there they still have a couple injuries here and there but their main guys are there and playing you know and they're playing well now i feel like the only thing really this team i would love better is if they had more wing depth even though they do have Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, two of the best wings in the league on both ends. But I think some more depth, you know, like Terrence Mann is good. But after that, like their bench is like Russell Westbrook, Norman Powell are good guards, Daniel Tice, but then they also like Kobe Brown is running minutes for them. Who no disrespect to Kobe Brown, but like he's the 30th overall pick. He's not, I don't know if he's ready for that yet. You know, so I feel like another wing. And they also traded all their wings. They had all these wings. They traded them off for James Harden, Nick Batum, Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, KMR Jr. Literally all their wings are gone. You know, so maybe getting another wing, uh, giving them another 3 and D wing. Not saying anyone, they need like OJ and Anobi or anything like that. Crazy. It's just a decent wing that can soak up some minutes, come off the bench and hit a number three or two and just be an okay defender. Like a Toy Craig type of player-ish like that. You know, they don't need anything, a big name or anything crazy. Just a decent little wing player. Uh, it would be good for them but besides that they're really clicking right now for the la lakers my gift to them would be consistency around lebron and ad uh the la lakers lebron and ad have been great lebron in year 21 is still great ad has been playing very well especially as of recently he's been playing very well after that it's a bit, been a big question mark they did win the in-season tournament they swept through the in-season tournament they went seven and oh put a banner up in the stadium every other game beside the in-season tournament they're nine to 14 so they got up to play the NCAA tournament the regular the rest of the regular season it has been great you know and coming into this year of course we had our expectations on the lakers because it's the lakers with lebron and ad but we saw last year they were a playing team they were not good made some changes went from the playing and went all the way into the conference finals you know and now this offseason people love this offseason including me everyone thought they had the best offseason in that with the players around them now this team could be a legitimate championship contender and so far they have not looked like that at all and a lot of that's because their depth, their free agency, the great free agency we thought they had, we over, we probably overshot it because the players they've got haven't been great. D'Angelo Russell has been, eh, like he's had some bad moments, bad stretches and good stretches. Right now he's not in a good stretch right now. Austin Reeves has become the sixth man now because we thought he was going to take a jump. He hasn't really taken that jump. So he's just back to the sixth man role. We're at Jamura. Um, we thought he was going to be big this year. He's kind of been in and out of the lineup, and minutes have been kind of weird. Um, Jackson Hayes is okay. Christian Wood did have a good stretch. He doesn't really play that much anymore. Torian Prince has had his good moments and his bad moments. Cam Reddish has been good defensively. Offensively, he's still been kind of eh. Uh, Gabe Vincent, I, I don't know what happened to him. He's not good anymore, I guess, and he's missed a lot of games. So, yeah, the Clipper, the Lakers just not have, have not had any consistency in the minutes. Without LeBron and the court have been bad. The games without LeBron and the court have been bad. Last night they beat, got beat by the Timberwolves, even though it was a close game. But still, you could tell right away they need LeBron. You know, so um, yeah, just consistency around LeBron and AD. And whether that's from their players they have now, guys like Austin Reeves, Angelo Russell, and them getting you know more comfortable and more confident and starting to get on fire, or if that's a move, you know, if that's a move to maybe get a third guy like Zach Levine in there for some consistency, whatever it is, but the gift the lakers need right now they need some consistency around their two stars for the memphis grizzlies health is the gift i'm giving them john moran is back they're 2-0 with job ja back he's looked really good this team has been completely different they had a very bad start they went 6-19 in the 25 games that john ja missed and they're kind of below they really need to catch up ground there's still a few games out of the play-in uh they're about like what four-ish games out of the play play-in so they need to really step it up and even with even with job being back this still is a very depleted injured team uh, marcus smart missed a lot of time apparently he's gonna be back soon i don't know when steven adams is gonna be out for the year brandon clark we don't know when he's gonna come back luke Kennard, another shooter we don't know they've had a lot of injuries even without even with 
out. Like taking out the fact that Jaw's been suspended and not gonna play. They've had so many injuries as well. So the one thing the Grizzlies really need is health. If they can get some health in there and just consistency consistency and playing with each other, they could be a really good team. We already see that. Two games in, Jaw just came back and already they won two in a row and they look like a completely better a way better team. They did the first two months of the season. So really they need some health. For the Miami Heat, my gift to them would be a bucket getter. This one is a very tough one for the Heat because I feel like they've been pretty solid this year. The only thing really that we've been saying the entirety of the last few years is their offense is not great. They don't have any consistent bucket getters. You know, Tyler Hero has been that when he has played, but he has missed a lot of time and injuries. You know, uh, Jimmy, in the regular season, we know what he does. He kind of just coasts through, and then when the playoffs come, he turns into an elite player. Bam is still good offensively. You know, after that, they're kind of just makeshift. Tyler Duncan Robinson sometimes hits some shots. Josh Richardson and Caleb Martin and Kevin Love sometimes do their own thing, and it works. But they don't have a consistent here go player A. Go in there and go give us 20, 25. Or down the stretch, we need some buckets here, player. Go out there and help us win. You know, they don't have that. So, of course, my gift to them would be a consistent bucket getter. It doesn't, doesn't need to be a star. Not really, necessarily. Just someone that can consistently go out there and you can rely on, on the offensive end. That's what Miami needs. For the Bucks, a guard defender. Uh, the Bucks right now, they have picked it up. They're 21 and 7. They're the hottest team in the league right now. They've won six in a row. They're only a half game out behind the Boston Celtics for the best record in the NBA. Um, Giannis has been playing at an unbelievable level. Um, the game has been gotten better as time has gone on. Brooke Lopez and Chris Milton do their thing here and there. You know, their bench has been alright. But the one thing that is a big problem with the Bucks is their defense. They are too good of a team to have a defense this bad. You know? Um, and specifically the guards. Guards have come in and worked on the Boston Celtics. Damian Lillard and Malik Beasley are their starting guards. And then you see why their defense is not good. Damian Lillard, obviously, Hall of, future Hall of Famer. Amazing player. But you, you don't rely on Damian Lillard for defense. He's out there to give you buckets. Not stop getting buckets. You know? He's never been that type of player. Malik Beasley, he tries. But... It, it, it doesn't work. Tyrus Halliburton went by him by just dribbling the ball. Like, it, by pointing and Malik Beasley didn't. You know that clip. Malik Beasley can have a defend. <laughs> so, they just, they need a guard. An Alex Caruso type of guy. Can they get him? I don't really know. But I'm not giving specific examples or anything. But they just need a guy that can defend a guard. Really. Because they have defender. They have Giannis. They have Brooklyn. They have Chris Milton. But they need someone that can defend on the perimeter out there and stop perimeter players from dropping 30 on the on the bucks that's what they need for the minnesota timberwolves my gift to them would be a six-man bucket um timbles are tied with the Celtics for the best record in the league they're 21 and 6 they look amazing and honestly this one is really hard because i don't really have any super glaring like things that the timbles really need so i try to really dig for one and the only thing i really can say i guess is they don't really have a six-man bucket I got like a Jordan Clarkson or Malik Monk that a lot of other teams kind of have or even like a Bobby Portis-ish type of player that could come in and have the, that 25 point night if like they could throw out there if the offense is kind of stale and they're not getting off to a good start just be like hey Jordan Clarkson hey Malik Monk hey this guy go out there and just shoot some shots and hopefully get us back into the game you know it's an instant offense they don't really have that um but the thing but saying that I don't think it's a downfall they don't have it because I really like their bench Nas Reed has been really good. Kyle Anderson is very solid. You know, guys like Troy Brown and them have made, like, some good contributions to this team. So I don't think it's necessarily a thing they should go out and, like, really be desperately needing. But if I had to give them a gift, I would give them a six-man bucket getter. A guy that can come off the bench, and if their offense doesn't click in that night, just give them a guy that can go out and give you 20, 20 15, 20 points a night. Even pop off for a 25-point game, maybe even 30 if they really need it. You know, but besides that, I really love this Minnesota team, man. I really do. For the New Orleans Pelicans, this is a pretty obvious one, but it's what they need. Their gift is health. It's been that for the past few years. <laughs> health. We've seen this year that when they're fully healthy, they're a really good team. Right now, they're 17-12. and 12. They're 7th in the Western Conference after having a kind of an ass start. They picked it up. They're the healthiest they've been in the past few games. Trey Murphy's back. Jose Alvarado, Najee Marshall back. Zion and B.I. are playing games. Zion has missed a few games here and there. B.I. has missed a few games here and there. C.J. missed a lot of time with a lung injury. Um, they've had had role players, of course, miss a lot of time. But now they're kind of at the healthiest they've been in a while. 
And they're showing that when they're healthy, they're going to be a tough team to be. You know, they're going to battle. They have great players, great role players, good coach, good defense. They just they have they have a lot, you know. So really, what they really need is just to stay healthy. Hopefully, not another big injury after this team for one of their key players. And if they can consistently be playing for the rest of the year, they they're going to be a tough team to beat. Next, we have the New York Knicks. This one is a very interesting one, but it's something that you know. I, th I thought about it and I think maybe this could be their gift. The gift for the New York Knicks is another star next to Brunson. Another star with Jalen Brunson. The Knicks are a really good team, obviously. Uh, right now, they're 16-11. They're tied for the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference after getting off to a not great start. They have gotten a lot better as time has gone on, and they're good right now. But I feel like another star for the Knicks will bring this team to the next level. I feel like, of course, if everyone sees the Knicks are good. But I don't think anybody sees the Knicks as a team that can contend with the Celtics, the Bucks, even the Six, even the Sixers right now. I would take them over the Knicks. You know, even my if Miami and New York play in a playoff series, I don't know. I might take Miami. Like New York is a really good team, obviously, and they could beat the Heat. They could beat the Sixers, obviously. But I don't see them as like a really like a super competitive top contending team in the East that could get out. You know, and I feel like if they do have another star. That changes things. Of course, the Knicks are always, you know, star hunting is a thing in New York, obviously. But, you know, they've been talking about it for the past few years. And now I feel like the move should be made. You know, Jules Randle has been good recently. He got to a very horrible start, but as of recently, he's been good. RJ Barrett has been very solid this year. I like what he's done. But Jalen Brunson has shown that he's, he's, the, he's the number one in New York. I feel like another star to pair with Jalen Brunson and those two you know and maybe even if you keep RJ or something like that like that changes things for New York I think I see the Knicks in a different light if they get another star out there so I think my gift to them would be give them another star and just see what happens out in New York for the OKC Thunder my gift to them would be bench depth specifically maybe a guard um the Thunder were another one of those teams that was very very hard to kind of find one because i feel like this team doesn't have any like super glaring flaws or obvious needs right now they're 18 and 8 they're second in the western conference they've been amazing all year uh shea has been mvp level chet holmgren has been on another level when it comes to coming in and impacting the game lou dort j-dub you know isaiah joe has been amazing so like yeah they have a really good all-around thing i guess well if i had to give them something i'll give them probably another bench player maybe even a guard because josh giddy Hasn't been amazing this year. After that, then we have another point guard. I guess that maybe if Shea goes out, someone that could kind of calm the team down and do their thing, even though J-Dub does play that role, I guess, a little bit sometimes, and maybe Josh Giddy a little bit. But I feel like you don't have any consist a consistent, like, six-man come-off-the-bench point guard, vet point guard that come in and do that. So I guess if I had to give him something, it would be something like that. But besides that, I mean, OKC's been really, really good this year. For the Orlando Magic, this one is a very kind of an odd one. But my gift to Orlando Magic will be efficient shooters. Um, the Magic have been a surprise team this year. They're 16-11. They're fourth in the East. They're currently on a four-game losing streak, so they have kind of fallen a little bit in the past few games. Uh, but they've been good. Defensively, they've been really good. Offensively, they've been all right. They could be a lot better, though. And I feel like one of the things that's going to be a big problem for the Magic is their offense and voice, their efficiency. I feel like has not been amazing. Franz Wagner's been really good, but he has not been efficient this year. Powell's been pretty solid. He has, has, does have his games once in a while. But after that, they don't really have any efficient shooters, I feel like. You know, like Jalen Suggs has been solid. Cole Anthony. I don't know. I just feel like their efficiency and, like, big consistent shooting for them has not been good this year. So I feel like my gift to them would be a consistent, efficient shooter that I can rely on and be like, give him the ball, and they can rely on him to hit some shots. I feel like that's one thing that Orlando kind of needs. But besides that, I'm a big fan of watching this Orlando Magic team. I feel like they're really good. But I feel like if they get some more consistency and efficiency, they'd be even better. The 76ers, I'm giving them a 3 and D wing. That's my gift. Um, they're another team that's kind of like, I kind of, it's kind of similar to the Clipper one. The Clipper one, I gave them a 3 and D wing. The Sixers, I kind of have the same mentality-ish. I like their wing players they have. I like the roster they have. But I feel like maybe another wing player that can consistently defend and knock down some shots would be good. Kelly Oubre has been really good this year. You know, offensively, defensively, he tries, but he's not an amazing defender. Nick Batum has been all right. Marcus Morris sometimes does his thing. Roko defensively is good. Offensively, I don't know. 
where you're going to bring him, you know? So I feel like their wing depth is all right. But I feel like if they can have an, just one more pretty solid 3 and D wing, I feel like that would be even better, you know? But besides that, I love the Sixers roster. I feel like this is one of the better Sixers rosters they've had in recent times, you know, with Joel, Tyrese, all the players around him playing great, the new offensive system they have. Nick Nurse has come in and changed the game. And they look like a completely better team than they had in the past few years. So, but if I had to give them a gift, I'll probably give them yeah another another good three and D wing. For the Phoenix Suns, my gift to them is another obvious one: health to the big three. Uh, we have seen about approximately a quarter in a game and a quarter of this Suns big three together playing. Bradley Beal's missed a whole lot of time. He came back for a game with Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. They lost that game. Then the next game, he hurts his ankle. He's going to be out for a while. Kevin Durant has missed a few games here and there. Devin Booker has missed some games as well. Um, all three of them, have, again, only played a, a game and a quarter together. So, really, that's what they need. They need help for the big three. You know, because besides that, they've been pretty solid. You know, right now, they're currently sitting at ninth in the Western Conference. They're 14 and 13. They were higher. You know, they have been losing a little bit as of recently. But they still have been pretty solid, you know, without their big three really playing together a whole lot. With Kevin Durant having a great year, Devin Booker's been really, really good as well. Some of the guys like Yusuf Nurkic, Eric Gordon, Grayson Allen, Jordan Goodwin, who come in and provided a lot of things as well. But, I mean, obviously this team was built to have these three together and to go win a championship. And so far we have not seen the big three together. So that's what they need. They desperately need that as a gift. For the Portland Trailblazers, this one is a very odd one to think of, but I found one. Consistency from anyone besides Anthony Simons, really. Uh, Anthony Simons played the first game of the year, then missed a whole lot of time due to injury. He's been back, and so far as he's been back, he's been spectacular, averaging about like what 27 points per game. He just had a 40-point game last night and an almost comeback win against the Wizards. He's been by far their best player. After that, there's just been no consistency. Shane Sharp is in his second year. He's had some good moments, but he's also had some not great moments as well. DeAndre Ayton has been good rebounding. But after that, it's like offensively still kind of, uh, School Henderson, their number three overall pick that they're hoping to build around him for the future, has not had a great rookie year. He's been better as of recently, but he has not had a really good rookie year. So they just don't really have any, like, consistent things they can, you know, fall back on when anything's not working. You know, the only thing has been, here, Anthony, do something, you know? Uh, but... You know, it's kind of hard to think of these things for like rebuilding teams because the Portland wasn't supposed to be good this year, you know. So I'm not expecting anything crazy from the Blazers, but if I had to give them one thing, it'll be a, some consistency at least around Anthony Simons. You know, something we consistently be like, okay, we know Shane Sharp's going to come with this. We know DeAndre is going to do this. We know Scoot's going to do this. We know this player's going to do this every night. You know, for the Kings, my gift for the Kings would be a defensive player. Uh, the Kings. They're 16 and 10. They're the fourth seed in the West. They're doing good. Um, their defense is not great, though. And that was the case last year. But last year, they had one of the best offenses of all time. So it was like, eh, you know. This year, it's kind of similar. Where their offense isn't the greatest. But it's still pretty good, obviously. They still have De'Aaron Fox having an amazing year. Bonus has been good. Keegan Murray's starting to wake up. You know, Malik Monk is one of the best six men. Stuff like that. But defensively, they're not good. <laughs> they're not good defensively. Uh, they have a lot of pace and stuff like that but defensively. They don't really they don't get the job done So adding a defensive wing or guard or just someone that can play defense over there That can give them give them consistency on the defensive end Would be huge. It would go a long way for this Kings team For San Antonio Spurs. This one's a very obvious one. Honestly, this one was a kind of an inspiration for this video A point guard to give Victor Wembanyama the ball um, I don't know how you have a team that has a 7-4 center and they just don't give him the ball I, I don't even even if he wasn't a number one lower pick just a, ran, a regular 7 foot center how do you not even do pick and roll lobs or stuff like that with him this guy was the number one overall pick and is one of the like highest is probably like the most tatted prospect ever he's 7 for 4 they can do all, all these things why are we not giving him the basketball why has he just been sitting in the paint cutting I mean, credit to him, he's still moving. He moves off the ball so much. He does all these other things, and he never gets the ball, you know? And the one thing about the Spurs this year, and big reason for that is they don't really have a point guard. They've been running the Jeremy Sohan at PG's um, thing. So far, it's not looking great. Jeremy Sohan has been pretty solid, but he's, he's not a point guard. I mean, no, he's not a point guard. After that, Trey Jones, he's good. 
you know he's, but is he a starting level point guard no he's he's he could be a good backup but he's not a point guard after that they don't have any other point guard on the roster Devonte graham he's only a point guard because of his height you know he's not out there to pass he's out there to shoot the ball and he doesn't even play you know so they don't have a point guard so what the spurs need is just a point guard a veteran point guard that can say hey everybody clear out Wemby here do something you know that would see coming down and would see Wemby cutting and give him the ball or throw him the lob and he can dunk like you know how many more points Victor Wembanyama can average on the year if he just had like a Fred Van Vliet that would be like you know what we're not doing anything right now here Wemby here you go I see you cutting you can have it or here Wemby do something with it you know like he's averaging what 19 a game on 18 and a half points per game because last night he had like seven because that game was like the game where like the bull the spurs did not even try to look his way um but yeah he could be averaging 20 or maybe more than 20 right now but just because you know just to ha- just having a point guard that is aware you know so that's what the spurs do really need they need a point guard the toronto raptors my gift to them would be a pascal siakam trade uh, the raptors are currently 11 and 16 they're 12th in the eastern conference yeah, and I think it's time to trade Pascal Siakam. Time to go young in Toronto. Pascal's a really good player. I'm saying this. I feel like he's one of the more underrated players in the league, especially when it comes to all-stars and stuff like that. He's really good. He didn't have a great start to the year, but recently he's been starting to pick it up. But the Raptors are not good right now. They don't look like a great team. Scotty Barnes has been taking a big jump this year. He's shown that he's the, he's the guy in Toronto. And so I feel like with Scotty Barnes taking the jump, with him doing what he's been doing, it's okay for Toronto to trade Pascal Siakam, you know, and go young, trade him, get some p- picks and stuff back. Let's build around Scotty. Let's kind of tank a little bit, try to get another good young player, and let's just do that. I feel like that would be the best thing for Toronto. So my gift for the Raptors would be trade Pascal. Next, we have the Utah Jazz. My gift to them would be a young star to build around. Uh, I feel like the Jazz, they have some young pieces, pieces. But they don't have a future, a young guy that they don't have a Kate Cunningham type of dude or Wemby or someone like that or Scoot or like someone like that or Lamelo. They don't have a guy like that, a young player that can be like, all right, this is the guy for the future, and then we're gonna hope for these young guys around him. You know, we find something else to build around him. But we know for sure this is gonna be the guy of the future. Utah doesn't have, Utah, they don't have that. Long marketing. He's been good. Obviously, he's coming to Utah. He's turned into an all-star player, but he's like 27, and he's about to be a free agent. You're going to have to pay him a lot of money, and he might not be on the team past February. Um, Keontae George has been really good, but I don't think he's a building block, your centerpiece of the future. I think he's going to be a really good player. Uh, Taylor Hendricks, same. I don't think he's a star, superstar in the making. He's going to be a good player to be around, but he's not a guy of the future. And they don't have anybody else. Walker Kessler, again. Walker Kessler is really good. He's going to be a really good player to, like, you know, compliment. But he's not a, the building block of the future in Utah. Utah doesn't have a star player they can rely on and be like, if all else fails, we know at least we have this guy that we know can be a superstar. A guy like the Hornets have LaMelo. The Pistons have Kay Cunningham. The Spurs have Wemby. You know, like, they don't, they don't have that right now. So I think giving a guy them that, and I think they're trying to do that with training offline marketing, guys like that, to tank and get a high pick and get that guy eventually. But um, right now, they don't really have that. So I feel like if Utah does have that, they have a lot of good surrounding pieces. Again, Keontae George, Taylor Hendricks, Walker Kessler. Those are three, like, really solid young players. I have, you've seen some things and be like, okay, you know, they could do something in the future. You know, I don't think any of them, though, are the star building block of the future. So I think if you put a star building block of the future with them, there's a there's a bright future in utah and finally the washington wizards my last gift to washington is the same as utah's a young star to build around um pacer the wizards kak kuzma is really good you know he's been really good this year i hope he gets traded you know because i think a contending or a good team can use a kak kuzma uh the wizards don't have a young star to really build around for the future jordan Poole was supposed to be the guy they got jordan Poole in off season hoping he was the guy but it's turned out, I don't think he is. He's not the, He's not a star in the future. He's going to be a good player, obviously. He's going to be around the league. But he's not a future superstar that you build around. You know? And after that, Bilal Kolobali, I think is pretty good. I think he's going to be a really good player. Is he a star yet? 
we can't say that yet maybe you know in the future another he's still so young that maybe in another year or two he might pop off and be like okay he's the guy you know for the future but right now currently on this team i don't really know if the wizards have the guy you know that they're like all right like, like i was saying for utah jazz like if all else fails at least we have you know this guy is going to be the building block of the future and we can guarantee that he's going to be you know the next dude for us they don't have that yet you know maybe Bill Kolobali in the future maybe if Jordan Poole all of a sudden comes out next year and looks like a completely different player and averages 20 something maybe then they have it but right now they don't have it and I think they're trying to tank to get that with the number one overall pick number two overall pick so hopefully they can get that in the future but I think right now that would be my gift to them but yeah it's gonna be it for today hope you guys enjoyed once again um if you yeah, have a idea of what your favorite team or a team like this what they actually need and not my thing that i gave for as a gift let me know in the comments um if you like the content around here consider subscribing like turn notifications is also like that i really appreciate it it's a lot around the road to 500 subs so it'll be really appreciated if you do that and uh yeah i'll see you guys tomorrow